Hey everyone, welcome back to AFTV and the Tactical Insight Show. Disappointing result for Arsenal, we've got to break it down. One that, we were touching it and planning it, that there's positives to this. And, then, and we're going to talk about those, because I think it's only right to. It just feels frustrating the manner in which we lost it. That's not a takeaway from Man United and the things they did do well. This is an Arsenal channel, we're going to talk about the things that we did well, but the things we got wrong as well. Um, frustrating, isn't it, Graham? It is. Uh, first of all, you're back with an L, mate. I am. How was Turkey? Uh, yeah, no, Turkey was nice. It was a good week. Obviously, was out there for transfer deadline day. That was a little disappointing. I was hoping we'd get one more in. And we actually will talk about that at the end of the show. Uh, but two wins against Villa and Fulham. Score lines I don't think reflected actually the performances in those games. But, you know, we had that five out of five. And, yeah. you know, disappointing. I, this was a performance that I think merited more. Do you know what, uh, James? I've been quite fortunate. I've travelled the world quite a lot in my time. Mm. But I've never been to Turkey. Oh, really? Never. So I don't okay. even do Turkey at Christmas. Oh, do you know? What do you yeah, have for Christmas? Uh, anything but turkey. <laughs> Probably beef. Yeah, yeah look, um, there were a lot of positives to take out of the game yesterday, James. I think we were talking about this overnight. There were a lot of positives to take for us in defeat. I think Arsenal went to Old Trafford and dominated the game. Yeah. Structurally good in possession. Very aggressive in the press. I thought Jesus was excellent with some elite hold-up play. We got in some really good positions in their penalty box, which we didn't capitalise on. I think we had something like... Um, uh, only three shots out of 48 touches in their penalty box, whereas they had six shots out of 17 touches in ours, which tells you a lot. But ultimately, I think Man United won it because they were very good in transition. Mm -hmm. uh, excellent midfield quality from Christian Eriksen mm -hmm. and Bruno Fernandes. And, and in the end, Arsenal's bravery uh, wasn't rewarded. Yeah, I agree. Let's look at the match stats. You touched on it there. We had 60.5% of the possession in that game to their 39.5. We had 16 shots to their 10. Three on target, as you mentioned, with the, what, 48 shots, uh, touches, touches we yeah. had in their box. Yeah. 48 shots would be quite something, wouldn't it? <laughs> 396 <laughs> passes completed. So that's about 143 more than their 246. And we had 55 final third entries. It, it, it illustrates our... Um, our Dominance in terms of possession and, and territorial dominance. Structural. Yeah, listen, yeah. I've seen Man United fans saying to me, yeah, but so what? What did you do with it? And, yeah. and I'm going to challenge that in a little bit. Yeah. Um, but there was a, there was a degree of uh, authority about Arsenal in this performance. It yeah. was just lacking that cutting edge in yes. the final third that reflected how we approached and played a lot of that well, game. I think you could see in this game uh, where the two teams are. Mm -hmm. uh, Arsenal under Arteta... Uh, the way Arsenal now are so well structured uh, in possession, the way we build up in that 2-3-5, uh, players know where to fill in, where to rotate, the movement is good. Mm -hmm. You can see quality in our play, uh, um, whereas Man United, um, obviously more work in progress under their new manager. And I think he stuck to their strengths yesterday. He didn't mm -hmm. want to go too much um, gung-ho, mm -hmm. so to speak. He wanted to play in transition, which is a bit like going back to the... Oli Gunnar Solskjaer days almost, wasn't it? And that's the way yeah, they, it was, the, the way it, he used to play. So, you, you know, fair play. They were more sensible, yeah, I think. And I think that he, he won it yesterday, Ten Hag, because they defended better. Mm -hmm. uh, and also they took advantage, I think, of um, the fact that Fernandes was very good between the lines and we didn't deal with that. Yeah. Um, I think when you play like we did yesterday, we were very aggressive in our press. We went mm -hmm. man to man in our press. If that press becomes uncoordinated, that's your problem. Yeah. You know, and to be honest with you, for most of the game, the press worked really well. But three times we were caught. Yeah. People will question why at 1 1 we didn't sit in a bit more for 15 mm -hmm. minutes. Uh, but ultimately, Arteta wanted to win the game. Mm -hmm. uh, and in the end, we got caught. Uh, and Man United are devastating on the counter attack with Rashford. Mm -hmm. uh, and I thought that, that you know, Ericsson obviously is offering them in that new hybrid 6 8 role some, a new dimension. And we didn't deal with that well enough. Yep, I agree. Now, guys. Forgive us for, you know, I know we're analysing a defeat here, but we do have to big up production because they've done some amazing work, you know, with the set and the tactical pad here. We're going to go to the tactical pad now and discuss a few other things in terms of touches we had, shots we had, the shape, look at Man United's goal. So let's have a little look at that now. All right, we're up here at the brand new tactical pad. You've seen it a little bit in the background and stuff, but now we get to use it. Um, at its full potential and um, as I said unfortunately it's not the kind of game and result we want to be analysing um, but I do have to say a massive thank you to production put this together Brendan and Joe um, it looks amazing we want to bring the best tactical insight possible win lose or draw we want to be talking about these games and we can illustrate it as best as ever here so I'm excited about this Graham um, let's talk first we're going to talk about shape in a sec the first thing I really want to touch on though is if we just get it up here 
There are going to be teething issues. <laughs> um, our Arsenal shots. I want to have a little look at some of the areas we had our shots when we got them here. Now, I heard from a lot of United fans saying, well, how many clear-cut chances did you have? And a lot of my argument back was, well, how many do you want teams to be having at Old Trafford? <laughs> you know, you guys are on the up. You, you, you had three wins in a row before then, two clean sheets before. This is Old Trafford. You've got a multi-million pound defence. You know, you don't expect Arsenal to have too many. And in fairness, I think Arsenal created... Maybe maybe they could have done a little bit more, but generally I don't expect Arsenal to create a lot more than what they did at Old Trafford, even when Ar when Man United at their worst. When I look at some of the areas that they did have their shots from, as I said, teething issues, so we're getting used to all this. Let's highlight it in yellow again. Some of the areas we got our shots, I think this is the Saliba one, that, you know, he kind of panics and skies. Then you've got, okay, this is the Saka goal, fair play, he scores. Then you've got the Odegaard one where it's cut back to him, and he absolutely shanks it. You've got Bakaya Saka's shot. That is one of those where kind of anyone, you get a touch, it might go in. You've got the Martinelli header. Okay, fair enough. I mean, De Gea should always deal with that. But look at all these kind of moments in the areas. You're thinking, how many... I know what, I know what people are saying. We didn't roll it and put it on a plate and force De Gea to make loads and loads of saves. But there are a lot of areas there that Arsenal were able to get shots away. And that doesn't even look at the crosses and the good areas we've got into. I just don't think you could have expected Arsenal to do a lot, a lot more than what they did, really. I think the only thing I would say about it, James, is uh, we did work our way into their box quite a lot. Mm -hmm. Is I don't think we showed the composure in these big That's moments. That's absolutely true. In, in the big moments when we got in good positions. Mm -hmm. whether And when you're in these big games... You don't need to rush these sort of situations. And I think we were guilty of that yesterday. Say, so, by the way, this comes from StatZone, iOS app, so go check them out as well for you know good data and stats around that. This is their graphic. Um, let's talk about shape now. I know this is something you really wanted to go into, Graham, um, because with Sabi Lakonga, maybe we adjusted a little yeah. too much to the fact that we didn't have Partey around any there. Is that fair? Um Possibly. Yeah. I think one of the secrets this year has been Granite Jacker mm -hmm. up here. Yeah. Box to box, box getting to box. forward. Yeah. Up here. So that's where he's been most of this season, doing a lot of good work. But obviously, as we saw in the Villa game, when Lekonga came in, there was a slight shift from Arteta, more like protection for Sambi. Mm -hmm. uh, Odegaard drifting around here. Just who's coming back, they were obviously going forward as well. Yeah. But that, that, that is how we built up. we got Saliba and Gabriel. you got Zinchenko and White tucking into midfield. Mm -hmm. uh, and Jacka possibly playing as like a hybrid role up there, but coming back to assist Sambi. That was like our build-up shape. 2-3. It still is in effect a 2-3-5. It's very fluid. Arsenal very fluid with their movements. Uh, and this is the way we set up on the ball, I think, when we had the ball, James. When going into this game, okay, we knew we were missing part in on any. And we, we had some other injury issues, but in fairness, Ramsdale, Odegaard, Zinchenko, they all came through. But we worried a little bit about a lack of depth. I mean, fair enough, Smith Rowe and Vieira came on, but Lukonga, who, as you, you'd heard, that he was meant to be playing as more of an eight, he's playing in a six. No, I, I'd, I'd said to you, I think Arsenal plan to use him more of, as an eight this season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I heard that from Gunner Blog, yeah. James McNicholas, yesterday. So, uh, so I, I, obviously, he's a lot more knowledgeable on this than me. Uh, but I think they are, at the moment, having to use him at six for two reasons. One, Thomas Partey has picked up an injury. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and he would have been... I think had Partey played yesterday, I think we would have been better off the ball. Because I think Sambi is great on the ball, not so good off the ball. Mm -hmm. But I thought he took a lot of very harsh criticism yesterday, uh, which I thought was a bit unfair, which we're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. But um, I think... Arsenal also had that option of trying to fill that position, yeah. uh, you know, in the transfer window. They did try and get Douglas Lewis in. Louise in. Yeah. So that tells me Arteta wanted someone at six when Partey's not there. Uh, and of course, El Nenny was injured as well. So, um, look, I, I think six is going to be a problem for us in these big games. Can Sambi play six in the big games? And I think yesterday, on the evidence that we saw yesterday, he did struggle off the ball. It is frustrating, Position. though. It is frustrating because I want to show some guys something. I was going to leave it till later in the show, but it's on topics. So let's do it now. Here's my squad. Now, at the very beginning of the summer, we discussed the players that we wanted to see Arsenal bring in. And I saved this because I wanted to go back to it. Now, I got a lot of what I wanted. I got Jesus. I got Zinchenko. In fact, let's, in green, highlight what I did get. I wanted Jesus. 
I wanted Zinchenko, but I saw him as more of a midfielder. Um, I wanted another creative midfielder, so we'll show that in yellow. We didn't get Madison, but we got Vieira. Um, and then we didn't get that kind of other forward. Now, that was the other player I sort of wanted, was another forward that could help. But I also look at the amount of players that we've let go. Pepe, Tavares as well. I've got Norton Cuffey, okay, he's gone alone, probably wouldn't have played a big part. The point I'm trying to make is, I just feel like we left ourselves quite short, and we foresaw the need for potential more players. And it wasn't just me, it was you as well. And I think your, the, you know, the players you wanted illustrates it even more, because I, rem I looked back at yours, and I'm going to show them in red again, because we didn't get them. Here we are, where's the red? You wanted another holding midfielder, and you wanted another player, that is with Zinchenko coming in as well. Tielemans and Basumi you mentioned. Is it not a bit frustrating that it we is. knew that we needed yep. more in midfield? Yep. And it feels harsh to be, bla not blaming, but putting responsibility on Sambi when we see that he's clearly meant to be used as more of an eight this year. Yeah, and uh, me and you have talked about this quite a lot over the last six months. The need to have someone who can replicate what Thomas Partey does. Uh, I liked Pasuma, mm -hmm. and he's, he's gone to uh, the rivals down the road. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, it, or a player like Pasuma, who could come in and do what Thomas Partey does. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think someone who's physical, uh, who offers us that, that probably Sambi is not. Sambi's a great technician, great on the ball, mm -hmm. uh, but he's not like we call a, a, a bona fide physical number six, is he? Sure. Uh, like what Partey is. So we, we haven't, and, and even Al Neni, I would say, is not quite. Uh, at the party level, though he, he is a steady player and sent, you know, more steady in that role mm -hmm. and positionally, certainly. But yeah, we, we foresaw this, didn't we? And, and, and I wanted a player like that. Somebody, mm -hmm. I mean, we, Party has only played 58% of Premier League games since he's been at Arsenal. He's only played nine consecutive Premier League games. We are building our centre midfield around a guy who's barely fit. So knowing that, you'd think that, uh, you know, go out and get somebody who's as physically dominating as he is, Basuma or someone else. And they've had plenty of time to look at it, but they haven't chose to do it. This is exactly why we did this at the beginning of summer, yeah. so that we could then... It's, everyone says, well, hindsight's super easy. Yeah, sure, no, but we tried to talk about this back then. Yeah. But listen, that's all the complaining I'll do on the Arsenal front in terms of that. Let's look at the Man United first goal, um, and we've got it right here. Um, so I've actually recreated this, as painful as it was, <laughs> but there was a little bit of, um, listen, we were pressing. And where Man United do well is originally they have the ball with Anthony and they recycle it. Martinez goes all the way back to the goalkeeper and then they go again. And they find themselves in this position. Now, they've done what Arsenal have done really well to teams, which is pull them all the way back so that they open up and then attack them when the space is open. And this is what is really, really frustrating, is that ericsson has got the ball here, but look at where the midfield is. Let's highlight them in yellow. Odegaard's gone out to press, Lukonga's come forward, and it feels like Xhaka never quite, I'm not necessarily blaming him, I think it's a, it's a, the whole thing's a bit dysfunctional. No. He never quite just gets a hold of this area of the pitch, which I think is what you've got to do when Lukonga has come to press. This is where I will say hindsight is wonderful, but that's a little frustrating. Yeah. It just felt that that ball into Bruno Fernandes, which we see here, is just a little, it's just a little too easy, isn't it? As you said, the ball from Ericsson into Bruno, and then you're right. Gabriel, point, Gabriel needed to be tighter there. Yeah. Once, once the Conga's engaged and gone up to Ericsson, Gabriel's yeah. got to come out and press Fernandez. He doesn't get there quick enough. Fernandez is on the ball. By the time he gets there now, he's in that space where he can hurt us. They've got now their four players up high. What they wanted, four against four. Uh, but he's free to receive the ball. Uh, and Sancho's now going to come in off the wing. Yeah. It's going to go out to Sancho. And the moment it goes to Sancho, he's driving in now, and we're, we've got problems now because Rashford gets it and plays in Anthony. Sinchenko has to come across because uh, Saliba's on the wrong side, yeah. and Anthony puts it away with his left foot. I think he gave Ramsdale the eyes. I yeah. think Ramsdale thinks he's going near post. Goes down very early for me, and that, that makes him uh, able to sweep it into that far corner. Yeah, really disappointing goal to concede. It is a frustrating goal. And the thing is, goal. it was against the, it was against the run of play because although they started 
very well for 10 minutes. Arsenal had been dominating up to that oh, goal. No. And that's, a, that was so infuriating about it. Second goal is against Ronald Play again. We haven't recreated it, but what we've got is the position where everyone is. Now, forgive me, guys. It was very hard watching the highlights, trying to pick out whether it was Xhaka or Martinelli. They might be the other way around. But the point is, Lekong has lost the ball in this area of the pitch. And what you've got is just a quick one, two... And Rashford's in. It's just like, ah. Oh. It's very disappointing for Lukonga to give the ball away there. And I felt in possession, largely, he was he was pretty good for most of the game. That felt, that's where with the word naivety, I think, absolutely fits. Because you've just equalised. You're in a good spot in the game. Arsenal didn't need to force anything. And he tries to play a pass. I understand it's high risk, high reward. And I've always defended Arsenal players for playing passes that don't look like they're necessarily on. But it was... It, that was the one moment I think, oh, that's, otherwise I thought Lokonga had a decent game and I think people were being a bit too harsh. He completed him. 38 of his 42 passes. Okay. He, he was decent he, on the ball. Yeah, he was decent. And people yeah. questioned him off the ball. I think what you've got to remember is we, we pressed literally man-to-man -man most of that game. Mm -hmm. So he was following instructions. So if he vacated his midfield position, I think it was on the instructions well, well, what the also, team were trying to do. And when he does that, you want somebody to drop into the space. So well, also, vacates. off the ball... You know, I think we limited Man United to maybe four good chances across the yeah. whole game. They scored from three of them. So, yeah. you know, I understand they scored three goals. I understand that it looks messy. But off the ball for a lot of the game, we did our jobs pretty well. So it's frustrating, guys. We're going to look at some of the other numbers. But, um, yeah, been good to discuss this on the tactical pad. Let's talk about some of our better players. Gabriel Jesus, I thought, was absolutely brilliant. Um, let's talk about him and look at his stats. You sent these through, Graham, an 88% pass accuracy. He won 13 of his duels. I've got to say... This is a banter and rivalry side. We never really do the whole banter thing here on, on this channel, apart from the old Tottenham joke. But, um, you know, Varane and Martinez, who've been lauded by Man United fans recently and probably still will be after this game, I thought were absolutely eaten alive by Gabriel Jesus all game. And obviously, listen... Who's going to celebrate that nor particularly care because we lost? But I thought Gabriel Jesus was outstanding and caused him so many problems. He was an absolute nuisance to them the mm. whole game. And he was fouled eight times in that game, which yeah. I think is more than any player in any of Europe's top five leagues this season. Well, in one game? Yeah. Wow. Okay. So that's incredible. Uh, I thought he had an excellent game. As I say, he was coming short. He was winning headers he had no right to win. Mm -hmm. He was giving them a real hard time. I thought Varane, Varane really just, yeah. struggled him. Tomane could only throw him over. Martinez couldn't get anywhere Martinez near him. Martinez couldn't get anywhere near him. Yeah, yeah. He, had a, he had a fantastic game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he really did. So did Bukayo Saka, who got a goal. And listen, there were still elements of Bukayo Saka's play that I found frustrating at times. I described it as um, almost like he's seeing what Martinez and Jesus have done recently. He knows the level he's got to, and he's perhaps a little frustrated that he's not getting to that level. And so he's almost trying to force it a little bit. Whereas I almost want him to just recognise, OK, cool, you're not at your very best right now, but you're still contributing brilliantly in a lot of ways. Um, and, 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 you know, just ease yourself into it. And I think at times we saw his brilliance, you know, getting around Malassia a couple of times and some lovely turns where I thought he looked very good. Uh, but he gets his goal, and I think also... That, I thought, we he, were... I thought he had Malassia on toast, to be honest. Well, I think he did for Malassia a lot is a of good defender. As well. yeah, yeah, he is a good defender. And, I, and I, I, look, last week I did say that I didn't think he's quite back at his best yet. But mm -hmm. I still think this game he was even better than he was last week. For yeah, what yeah. you say, I thought he holds on to the ball really well. If we look like uh, he never loses anything. the ball, yeah. does he? He never loses no, the ball. No, he's strong. Yeah. And he's strong. Whenever he gets the ball, he's doubled up on all the time. I thought he had some really good dribbles, some good runs. He took his goal. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought he had some really good moments in the game and I thought he, along with Jesus he was our best player and I thought he had a, a really strong performance yeah I think he had a strong performance um, I just think there were elements that were frustrating however you judge him by however, his very high standards of what you think thing. he can be I'm you? judging him by his highest of standards where he was you know so good for so long at a very young age and also uh, I'm probably watching with an air of frustration because we were losing a lot of that game. It's, so. a, it's a compliment how good he is, though. Well, it, well, it the way, is. The way, that the, the way that opposition now play against and him. And I will also say that we, own, like, uh, we looked like doing something when it was down his side. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, and, and maybe, I'm being, maybe I shouldn't even be mentioning the little negatives. I'm just, I think it's everything with the performance and the result is just a little frustrating, but he was absolutely at the heart of some of our best yeah, stuff. Definitely. So, a massive credit to Bakar Saka. Now... We promised we were going to leave this to the end of the show. <laughs> because, this is why, salty Arsenal fans, you lost the game because of other things, it's nothing to do with the rest, blah, 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 blah. 
I'm not coming here to talk about refs just because of the one incident with Martin Odegaard. I'm here to talk about the refs because of the ridiculous decisions that we continue to see. They're getting worse, Graham. I'm being deadly serious. I actually think they're getting worse. Week in, week out, almost as they're trying to fix it, they are forgetting the rules they've set. They're forgetting um, common sense in the game. They're forgetting that you know, slow motion isn't real life. It's a good way to see if there's contact, but it's not illustrative of what actually happened in that moment. You know, when you're going frame by frame, at, you know, one, you're slowing it down three times or whatever. Here's a quote from Mike Riley. This came out in 2021, I believe. This was talking about um, the leniency that they want to show in the game. He said, fundamentally, we want the approach to be one that best allows a player to express themselves, that allows the Premier League game to flow and means that the team of referees and VAR don't intervene in trivial offences. Let's create a free-flowing game where the threshold for intervention, both as referees and VAR, is slightly higher than it was last season. Graham, help me out here. <laughs> help me out here. Yeah, and I think on Sky yesterday, Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank, the ex-Chelsea striker who's now manager of Burton Album, he said that, didn't he? He said that, that, that they, they want more physicality in the game. Yet, it is a contact sport, yet they're taking away all physicality, aren't they? they it, it might as well become a non-contact sport because the goal we had disallowed from Gabriel Martinelli, um, they found reasons to disallow it by, they as you say, searching. looking at searching. The guy, the referee Tierney, was literally at the screen. He wasn't convinced. He was trying to find reasons to agree with what they decided upstairs for him to go and look at. I thought um, it was really soft. One thing I will say is that if that was a, a Man United flyer, player who'd gone down under a challenge from an Arsenal player and they'd gone down Stretford End and scored, would they have overruled that? I don't think they would. Well, I, and the, the thing is, Odegaard no, no, said it was, yeah. he barely touched him. It was very, very soft, wasn't it? It was very, very soft. I think Ericsson looks to buy the foul. Now, Roy Keane, I love Roy Keane in the studio. If that had been a foul, uh, uh, if that had been an Arsenal player, he would have said, the Arsenal player's too weak. He's gone down. Shows it's their off. mentality too weak. He would have said it, wouldn't he? You could just hear him saying it. The fact was, Ericsson went down very cheaply and, and we scored a perfectly good goal in transition. And then next minute, they're trying to chalk it off. Now, if you look at uh, some of the incidents we've seen recently, I saw last week uh, Bakaya Saka be body slammed to the ground. Yet mm -hmm. that was uh, too soft. Uh, I saw Ramsdale challenged by one of the Villa forwards and it went in the goal. That's too soft. My frustration is at the clear and obvious thing. My frustration is that they looked at Bowen on Mendy and they looked at Odegaard on Eriksen and they decided that that was a clear and obvious error in game and that they should disallow the goals because of it. And it's so inconsistent with what we've seen. As you mentioned, Bakaya Saka, he's pulled to the ground by Mings. There's far, more, there's far more contact on that than there is. I know people say, yeah, but it's different referees and it's different VAR and all that and, and it's different games. I get it, but they're meant to be consistent. And so frequently we see complete inconsistencies. Now, I'm of the opinion that Martin Odegaard, sure, there's a little bit of a hand, there's a little bit of a push, there's a little bit of a leg sort of hitting Ericsson's leg. If you want to disallow that and you don't want that to be, um, you don't want that to be a goal, that's fine, but then you've got to accept that VAR, therefore, is re-refereeing the game. Yeah, yeah, sure. It's not just overturning clear yeah. and obvious. It's actually coming in and saying, no, 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 you got that wrong. We're going to re-referee that moment, which isn't what it was brought in for. Spot on. And completely contradicts what Mike Riley said a year ago. That is my frustration. So all the Man United fans saying, but, but it's, it's a foul. I'm actually in the camp of it's probably more foul than not foul. So I'm kind of with the United fans on that. But you cannot tell me that's consistent. That and the Bowen thing is consistent with everything we've been seeing up till now. And you can't tell me that's consistent with what they've been saying in terms of more leniency in the game and only overturning decisions, which he's mentioned here, he doesn't want VAR to intervene in trivial offences. And mm. I think that is... Six of one, half a dozen of the other. You don't know that Ericsson can definitely stand up and ride the challenge. You don't know that there's definitely enough contact and enough force to throw him down. And that is where the frustration is for me. Is it a foul? Yes, it probably is. But it's totally and utterly inconsistent. The referee, I'm saw, it. About the referee it. saw it from eight yards away. He saw yeah. nothing wrong with it. Is it a clear and obvious error? No, yeah. it's not. Should VAR be refereeing games? VAR's not there to referee games, is it? It's there to, to correct. But if they want it to be, cool. 
then do it for all of them. Yeah. Then do it for all of them. Yeah. In that case, Kukurea's hair pull, it's a foul. Cool. Again, VAR's refereed it again. What it seems to me now is that we're, Mings, we penalty, are finding done. reasons, James, to chalk off goals. We are. Goals are what football's all about. Joe Willock, the Newcastle yeah. one. By the way, this is not just an Arsenal thing we yeah. talked about in the starting eleven. Joe Willock, they're looking for any reason. He goes clattering into the goalkeeper. Why? Because Tyra Mitchell pushed him. And mm. then there they are. They're just, it's just, they need to get a hold of it. I heard the Premier League have written to the PGMOL and asked them to review. And I think they came out and said, yeah, well, we did get that one wrong. Oh, how many? How many? These are not difficult. They're not difficult. Mm. I'm, 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 I'm getting so frustrated. Sure. Sorry, guys. It's, yeah. And it's not an Arsenal thing. It's not a conspiracy. It's not an Arsenal mm. thing. Every club is suffering. And people, people can say, yeah, but over a season it evens itself out. There's probably a little bit of evidence in that. The Kukurea one's not given. Chelsea end up drawing that game, but the corner one, you know, is disallowed and they win that game. So, OK, it balances out there. But that's not an exact science. It's not an exact science across 38 games. Everything definitely evens out. There's going to be a couple points gained and lost here and there. And that can be crucial because the level of the Premier League, those couple points make a massive difference. They've got to start getting more of those right. There can be errors, but they, they, they can't be this frequent, these errors. Do you know what? I, I was a big one who wanted VAR in. Yeah. I'm, I'm changing my mind at the moment. I, I, I want to I ditch it. it. I've literally come to the point now, I just want them to get rid of VAR. Uh, because they just can't... VAR m may not be the problem. The people who are applying it are. But we just can't trust these people. Uh, and, it, and I just don't see it changing. So uh, they, they can have all these meetings saying they're going to do this and do that. The thing is, it's just carrying on week, on week in, week out. I understand they do a difficult job, referees. You know, they are... You know, they've hurled abuse for 90 minutes and... It's a thankless job when they do get it right, and I, and I, I get it. I understand it's difficult, but please, n surely no one can see what's happening in the world of officiating the Premier League and be happy with it, and we've got to talk about it, so we have. Um, but we left it last because there was more to this game that cost Arsenal the three points, or at least a point, than just the officiating, and I'm not making excuses, but we've got to talk about it. Let's go through your round-up stats, Graham. Yeah, right. Thank you, mate. Uh, the closing stats for this week, Arsenal have failed to win any of their last seven Premier League games against Man United when starting the day at the top of the table. They've uh, drawn two, lost five. This is the first time since December the 14th, 2013 that Arsenal have lost the game but remained top of the table. Arsenal have lost more away games against Man United than any other opponent. That's 18 now. While only at Anfield, 69 goals, have they conceded more goals than at Old Trafford where we now conceded 52. Right. Uh, and interestingly, we talked about failure to take... Uh, uh, advantage of our possession in the box today. XG reflects this. In the last five meetings, Man United's goals have been nine against Arsenal, but only an XG of 5.7, whereas our goals have been seven, but our XG has been 7.5. Wow. So we should be scoring more goals and conceding less against Man United. Plenty of domination and territory in these games, then, but no punch, that tells you, doesn't yeah. it, up front? Yeah, absolutely. Arsenal have now, following Saka's goal, scored 10 left-footed left goals in a row, the longest run in, of any team in Premier League history. Yeah, how weird. I did see that. Arsenal have now won only one of their last 16 Premier League visits to Old Trafford. 1-1, one, one, drew 5, lost 10. Arsenal have now only two clean sheets in their last 15 Premier League matches. And finally, which I touched on earlier, Gabriel Jesus was fouled eight times in the game. The most fouls suffered by a player in one match in Europe's top five leagues wow. this season, James. All right, guys. Look, we're going to leave it there. Disappointing. I, I now I've put myself in a bad mood now talking about referees. Let's bounce, actually... back. Let's bounce back next week against Everton. That's it. Bounce back against Everton. We've got this year at game, obviously, to negotiate in the week. Um, I'm going to try to find a little bit of time to do something. It's very easy to sit here and complain about referees. I'm going to try and think of solutions in yeah. the week if I could put a little video together. James, one thing I will yeah. say is that, just finally before we round off today, is that I thought that Arteta yesterday changed the shape, uh, mm -hmm. which... He went three, two, five, which I think disrupted the week. We haven't yeah. touched on that, but I think it, we changed it too early. I know he did it against Fulham and it worked, but mm -hmm. I thought yesterday took off. I know Zinchenko and Odegaard were injury doubts, and he took them off. He also took off a holding midfielder. Mm -hmm. I went three at the back with five attacking players uh, across the front and then uh, across the midfield and wide, but moved Martinelli Saka back into wing back positions, uh, and then just moved um, Niket Inketia and Jesus up top. And before that got set, we were undone again uh, because we were up high. I think the change came too early. We were still 20 minutes into that game. We could have got something out of that game, I think, the way we were playing. But the one bright spot for me was the performance of Fabio Vieira. Yeah. When he came on, I thought yeah. he resisted the press very well, looked very good left-footed, right-footed. 
And I thought he looked really good in the game. Yeah, I really like Fabio It's a good Vieira. way to finish, actually. Yeah, it's a, it's a very good way to finish. I think you're right, Fabio Vieira. I thought it looked very good that positive, pass. A positive on a, on a, on a yeah. dark day. But look, let's take the positives about this. We went there, we dominated the game against a very good team. Uh, but un ultimately, we were undone in transition. It's something we need to learn. We've got Tottenham coming up in a few weeks, and Tottenham play exactly the same way as Man United. Well, certainly when they went 1 0 up, yeah. Um, I just want to address actually what you said very quickly about the 3 5 2 and the changes. Uh, yeah, people watching this show may be thinking, hold on, have you not talked about that? But, I think because for me, we were 2 1 down by that point, and I can understand why Arteta did it. And it's less about the general tactical approach of the game, and it was a gamble. It was a complete gamble. He went, I'm going to go for it, and we might draw or we might lose this by a bigger margin. I think he knew that. And I think. I don't think it requires a lot of analysis to know that we went to a back three and we were more open there. I think it's more how we conceded those other two goals at points where we were really on top that's disappointing. But maybe that requires a bit more discussion. Who knows? Anyway, guys, we're going to leave it there. Big thank you for joining. Again, I've said it before, a big thank you to production for putting this together. We're you know, trying to bring you the best tactical insight show. Win, lose or draw. Shame that we've got... Yeah, the great tactical pad for a defeat. But um, we'll be back. There'll be more wins to talk about. And um, I look forward to breaking them down here. Graham, a big thank you as thank always. You. Um, there won't be a tactical insight for the Zurich game. Plenty of uh, previews and reaction and everything as well. There will, however, be a... Will there be a tactical... There probably won't be a tactical insight. But there will be a tactical insight for Everton. So that game will be at 2pm UK time on the Sunday. And we'll be back next Monday as well to discuss that game. Hopefully... Hopefully we respond really well and we find ourselves in a position where we've got six wins out of seven. This was a blip. Let's bounce back with two wins. Let's go again because win our next game and we remain top of the table as we are now. And listen, the longer you're at the top, I know it's early, but the longer the better. So yeah, we'll leave it there. Big thanks. Get in the comment section. Let us know what we can do about refereeing, what we can do about just putting these chances away, making our dominance count. United show their, they show their class in moments. Um, but yeah, it's a shame to walk away with nothing. We'll leave it there. Catch you on the next one. Shop for AFTV merch at shop.aftv.co.uk Subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Snapchat and Twitch. We've got content for every platform, so check it out.